All right, another uh, example here of integration. And here we're going to integrate the function e to the x over the square root of 9 minus e to the 2x. So this is one of those problems, I think, uh, you know, it could certainly, uh, you know, has the potential to be confusing, uh, for sure. Kind of the thing that this most reminds me of, I mean, not tremendously at the moment, but, well, if you have the square root and 1 minus some variable squared, remember the antiderivative of that is arc sine of x plus c. So I'm kind of thinking, well, you know, this and this don't quite look alike at the moment. But I think we can do some stuff to, uh, to make this formula appear. So the first thing I'm going to do, uh, e to the 2x, recall we can write that as e to the x quantity squared. Right, again, you just multiply, uh, you know, the exponents, so that would give us our e to the 2x back. Well, hey, now I'm thinking maybe a u substitution, because if I let u equal e to the x, du would just be e to the x dx, and hey, that's conveniently in the numerator. So really, we would have the square root of 9 minus uh, u, that's what we're calling e to the x, squared, and then e to the x dx, again, that's our du. So I'm just going to write 1 du. So I say, oh, okay, well, now by doing this u substitution, I've gotten, uh, it's starting to look more like this formula now. But it's kind of like the same thing as with the arctangent example. We don't want a 9 down here. We want just to have a 1. Okay, so somehow we have to turn this into a 1. And the way we'll do that again is just by a little bit of algebra. So we could factor the 9, um, from out from underneath. Uh, we're not going to pull it all the way out of the radical yet. Uh, so 9 times 1 would give us our 9 back, and then we would need u squared over 9. So let's see here. Uh, keep simplifying. So now uh, we could pull the 9 out as a 3, and then we would be left with the square root of 1 minus u squared over 9, but just like the other example, I'm going to write that as u over 3 quantity squared. I'm going to write it as uh, something squared. So now what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to use yet another substitution. So, you know, maybe you could have done this in sort of one fell swoop or a little faster. Um, I like breaking them down just a little bit at a time because then I don't get quite so confused. So, all right, uh, I'm going to do a U substitution, another one. Since we've already used the, the letter U, uh, I'm going to do something different. Maybe I'll use a w substitution. So I'm going to let w equal one-third times u. So then my dw would be one-third du. And if you think about it in this problem, we really have a one-third du. So it says one-third du. We can just replace that with our dw. And then we would be left with one over the square root of one minus Okay, so now we're calling this w squared, and now this is good because, again, now we've kind of turned it back into, you know, this arc sine formula. Instead of x, we've got w, but, hey, that's a-ok -okay because when we integrate, we'll just get arc sine of w plus c, and now we'll just start backtracking our substitutions. So uh, arc sine, we said w, that was the same thing as one-third u, so we have one-third times u plus c, and well, we didn't start with u, we started with x's, and again, we said u was equal to e to the x, so that's what I'm going to plug in, it says we'll have one-third, um, so arc sine of one-third e to the x, plus c, and that will be our antiderivative.